The following is a special presentation of American Picker Man. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of American Picker Man. This is a cold weather quickie number seven in the grand scheme of things. It's the nearly the end of November. We've had a little snow. We've had a little wind. <coughs> I have a little cough. Oh dear, I do hope baby egg doesn't catch it. Uh, but we've had some nice weather on the weekend, so I actually made myself go out. I didn't actually make myself go out. It was quite easy, actually. I mean, it was in the low 60s, uh, cold in the mornings, but I thought, you know, maybe people are still trying to clear out their garage. We've had a few warnings that winter's on the way, you know, we have a few inches of snow here and there. Um, so I did go out a couple of times, and I got a couple of things. Why don't we just take a look at them so you can be, you know, on your way prepping your Thanksgiving dinner. Here we go. For two dollars, I picked up, here, here's what I picked up. I'm going to show you. It was, it was this. It was this little uh, Halloween, uh, let's say a little candy dish kind of thing. No markings on it or anything. Doesn't look that old particularly, but what was inside, I'm going to put them inside here so you see exactly how I saw it at the sale. There, it was like, there's what I saw. And it had two dollars on it. And I walked by it once, came back to it, and took a closer look, and so glad I did, because uh, inside uh, was this, a little wind-up skeleton in, a very, see, see how that works? Let me wind it up a little bit more. Maybe that's all it needs. It's like a cup of coffee. There we go. Isn't that adorable? Uh, so I got that. We'll call that still chattering, like me. Uh, that's worth <laughs> that's worth about ten dollars uh, from the '60s, and this guy I thought was from the '60s, but it appears he may have been maybe from the '50s. This is a little uh, little lantern from Japan. It takes one C cell. Uh, head kind of pops off a little too easily. Uh, it's supposed to have a little notch right in there to make it catch, but uh, it it doesn't catch very well. That being said, it's in remarkably good condition. Uh, no acid damage or anything, and it had a little flat. It, this is not the original light. It had this light right here in there, kind of a long, tubey looking thing, and it was supposed to flash, I believe, um, and look uh, frightening. And it is kind of a frightening devil face there. Anyway, so a dollar for this. Uh, I saw these go in the box for $155. Somewhere in that ballpark. There's a fly ball out to right field. That ball is going, going, it is gone. Uh, without the box, around 80. So uh, that's about $80 fine for a dollar right there. And that is a nice cold weather, <laughs> cold weather quickie kind of thing, kind of kind of thing to find. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, I've got several spoons here. I'm not sure why I bought them. It was like day three of uh, of a of a estate sale of an, an estate sale, and it was like uh, fill a bag for a dollar. Well, there wasn't enough stuff uh, worthwhile to fill a bag for a dollar, so I just grabbed these spoons and I. Hmm. Hold on. Ah, it was here all along. Anyway, the reason I bought it was uh, this one is uh, sterling, so it's got some weight there. So I paid a dollar for uh, these, and then I paid a dollar for this. But we'll go through these first. So I got the sterling spoon um, and a couple of... Th this one uh, is not sterling, but it does have some markings, and it uh, seems like it's turn of the century. <coughs> oh, dear. I do hope baby egg doesn't catch it. Not a whole lot of value on any of these. Uh, here, I got these. Uh, this spoon, no value. Uh, anyway, these are these are I guess called uh, dessert forks because it's got the little heavier tine right there, and you can cut your pie. Problem is, I'm left-handed, so apparently I don't get any dessert. Wait, did he just say we couldn't have dessert? Uh, so anyway, uh, so uh, it's uh, not a whole lot of value on any of those except the piece of sterling. You know, maybe worth a couple bucks because of the the sterling weight, but. Uh, moving on. For a dollar, picked up this uh, Kodak. It says Kodak right there. Uh, it's a it's for film developing fluid of some kind, I guess. Uh, good sized heft to it. Good sized heft. Good sized jar. Good heft. It's heavy weight glass, uh, uh, but not worth a whole lot. Maybe ten bucks. Uh, on a good day. Uh, this past weekend went out for a little bit. This thing's a little too high, doesn't it? Let's just drop that a little bit so you can see my big 
early chest. Ooh, not really, not really. Anyway, went out this past weekend and uh, found an estate sale. Uh, it was day three of the estate sale there too, and so everything was half price, which is fine. Uh, of course, there wasn't a whole lot left to pick from, but I spent about an hour there just hoping to find something for you, for you, not for me, for you, and I did. Uh, so for uh, 50 cents, picked up this Adams magic trick. It's a money maker. I was hoping it was real, but it's a trick. So yeah, I really can't just spin it, put a piece of paper in there, and have a $20 bill come out. I place the dollar bill into the ringer, and we start to feed it through. You'll see that it changes it. It prints it into a $20 bill. Uh, but it's still in the package. It's marked 1958. Uh, I've paid 50 cents for that, I believe I said, and I did. And uh, trying to get around 25 to 30 for that. Uh, interesting thing here, things. Um, back in the, was it the, yeah, I guess it was the 80s, uh, on the radio station that was playing at my dad's tile shop. He was a carpet tile guy. I worked there for a while. Um, they always had the radio on. <coughs> You know, an easy listening kind of station, and uh, they always had at like 4:05 right after the news, I believe it was, or anyway, sometime in the later afternoon when we were done with our day. Usually, uh, they always had Ellery Queen Minute Mysteries on the radio. You know, they they set up a scenario, a little little clue, little little puzzle, little little mystery. Ellery Queen's Minute Mysteries. This is Ellery Queen with the case I call the Phony Promoter. While visiting the site of the upcoming Olympic Games, I met a sporting goods manufacturer who was making a new stock offering. His prospectus showed the equipment for a brand new sport he'd invented. He went on to say he was going to make sure the equipment and the sport caught on because he planned to place the game on the agenda of the Olympic Games. He even had patents on the equipment. But I suggested he drop the idea altogether. In a moment, I'll tell you why. And uh, if you could solve, you know, then you called in, and if you solved the mystery, you know, got the right answer, you won a little prize, a little something. Well, I got in one time, and uh, I did not get the right answer. It was very embarrassing, because, you know, I, 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 I thought I would win a prize, but I didn't. Anyway, uh, th that, all that to say, uh, these are Ellery Queen Minute Mysteries. They're on real to real tapes. Uh, still don't have a real to real player, so unable to test them, but, uh, you know, they, they appear to be in fine condition, as, you know, they frequently do. Um, so these were 50 cents a piece, so I got four of them, uh, and they each have about uh, 50, uh, 25 episodes on it. Yeah, 25. So that's 100 episodes right there, something like that. Uh, no idea what I'll get for them. I've got one up for auction right now. Started it at 29.99. Couldn't find any information on these anywhere. No, no previous sales or anything. No real lookers. No interest yet. But we'll see. We'll see what they go for. Um, certainly have to go for more than 50 cents piece, huh? right? Anyway, uh, continuing, uh, at the sale I also picked up this. Uh, this is a Cordially Yours Rose O'Neill. It's a little uh, souvenir kind of brochure from Museum of the Ozarks or something. Uh, from the, uh, It's about the creator of the Cupid doll, uh, Rose O'Neill. Uh, so it's got some information about her and some old timey pictures in there and uh, a few stories and uh, whatnot about her life and her cupies and uh, all that. So um, worth about uh, 10 to 20. Paid a quarter, paid a quarter. There were a ton of books at this sale, but they were fairly picked over, unfortunately. Uh, but I did find a couple of things here. This is The Unseen Enemy and Dig Here, a couple of uh, boys and girl books. See, it says right there, boy and girl books. So that's what they are. Mostly it seems like girls, though. Dig Here, you know, these seem like old Nancy Drew type mystery kind of things. Unseen Enemy. Uh, I'll probably try and get uh, 10 bucks for the pair. Not a whole lot there. Also from the same sale, picked up this lot of uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not paperbacks, which I uh, read uh, quite a bit when I was a kid. Always liked uh, to, to learn the silly facts and everything. This man is Heredia, the most famous of them all. He held his arm above his head for 10 years until birds actually built a nest in the palm of his hand. Uh, so I picked up this stack uh, for a quarter piece. And they go for around five dollars a piece, but I may just try and sell them as a lot and get uh, you know thirty or forty. It's Christmas time, and uh, well, nearly anyway. And somebody might be interested in that. Also picked up the Adventures of Patty the Beaver from I think it's 1907. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh dear! I do hope baby egg doesn't catch it. Uh, not in particularly great shape. Pretty well worn. Uh, 
all the pages are there, but the binding, you know, here, look at that big nasty crack right there. Uh, so not a whole lot of value there. Not sure why I bought it. Just didn't feel like holding on to that quarter anymore, I guess. Might get 10 for it. Uh, the week before, picked up uh, for uh, $10 for the lot of eight um, ornaments, and I picked up eight ornaments, and you'll see them. Uh, this is a little teeny tiny one just for Santa. It's, it's only like, it's wee big. It's a tiny little thing. Um, uh, so maybe five bucks on that. Uh, and I guess if I paid, uh, what, $10 for eight of them, that's like a buck and a quarter a piece, something like that. Uh, the rest of these are all from the Huntington Collection from 2005, Hallmark Keepsake uh, Ornaments. Uh, I can't take them out of the box because uh, they're all wrapped up and stuff. So anyway, you've got uh, uh, the very clever names here, very cute. Uh, Officer Rob Graver. Yeah, he's a grave robber, I guess. That's the joke there. Uh, we've got uh, Scoops McGore. He uh, scoops gory ice cream. Uh, and what do we got? It's uh, Ivana Hackatoff. I'm not sure what she wants to hack off. Looks like a hairdresser, so you know it's clean, it's family-like. Um, Grandma Tilly and Willie. Uh, Grandma and uh, a ghost child there. Uh, frightening. Uh, this is the uh, Bartholomew Hauntswell. Uh, right there. Biggest one. Not sure what that means. Uh, continuing on. Cast Taspel. Cast Taspel. Can it cast a spell? Very just the, where do they come up with these things? I don't know. Uh, Ms. Bonnie and Bones. Uh, so there you go. Uh, not really clever there, I guess. But anyway, so I'm hoping to get uh, for the, that set, uh, you know, like fifteen to twenty dollars a piece. Uh, so that makes that a pretty good find. Also picked up this, which is at my work. So to look at this the picture, this fine picture. Yeah. Uh, that's a Hager uh, ceramic pumpkin planter, I guess you might call it. Uh, I've got two of them now, uh, but again, that's Halloween stuff. So that goes in to a special box for my kid who was born on Halloween. So uh, anyway, that's worth about ten dollars. I paid a buck for it. So not too much left to show, unfortunately. Uh, a little bit of jewelry that we can take a look at right here. Yeah, so that was all Avon stuff, and I paid, I think, $20 for the whole lot. Uh, not a great bargain there, uh, but uh, some things will go for $15, $20. Uh, it's Christmas time, and, you know, wallets are open. <laughs> we'll see about that. Anyway, I think that's it. I've looked around while not on camera, so you don't have to see my butt dropping and my face dropping, my butt dropping. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it. That's all I've got to show you. Uh, thanks for joining me on this cold weather, quicker no cold weather quickie number seven. Uh, hopefully we can do this again, maybe in a couple, well, I, I won't be doing any more yard sales, that's for sure, so it's going to be Goodwill, estate sales, and that's just if I feel like doing it. Otherwise, I might throw together just some kind of, a, oh, that's right, I got a contest, it's going to be, get ready for it, it's going to, it's called, it's called, 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 called something like, I haven't quite, got, you know, figured it out completely, something like, um, hey, I know that face, something like that, something like that, so, you know, you figure it out, see if you can figure it out, and maybe in a couple, three weeks, that'll be up there. So uh, look forward to that, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you again. Thanks for coming by. Stay tuned for updates on a few things that sold. Uh, pretty good bunch of stuff to look at, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care. And if I don't see you before, and I won't, happy Thanksgiving. In the case of the phony promoter, no individual can simply place a sport on the agenda of the Olympic Games. The game must be tested by athletes, then accepted by an international body. He lost this game. Listen again to Ellery Queen's Minute Mysteries.